Hello, welcome to We Have Issues. I'm Anthony. And I am Stevie Wildcard. And every week, Stevie Wildcard and I get together and we do our best to overcome the various issues and obstacles that life throws our way so we can make comic book issues that you always have obstacles, Stephen. There are always obstacles with life and comic <laughs> books and every project we ever do. What are we doing? Why didn't we become doctors or lawyers, Stephen? What are we doing with our lives? What is oh, this? Oh, man. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. Hit, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button if you can. Uh, comment something for the algorithm. It'll really help us out. We've been suffering lately, Stephen. Our view count has plummeted just completely just down the drain completely uh can you for the, the the new viewers and like just to to remind the people where we come from will you give us like a previously on we have issues and just kind of previously on anthony and steven's life Anthony and Steven meet in high school. They're bitter enemies at first, however, become best friends. Throughout the years, they attempt to make comics with failure after failure falling on Steven's shoulders. And then one day, Anthony realizes we can start a podcast to hold us, you, accountable each week to finish the comics. And thus, We Have Issues podcast was born and also birthed our first comic, Play It Again, and two comics following <laughs> deathless issues one and two currently working deathless issue three yeah so we've been doing this for a long time we've been trying our best to break into the comic book industry in some fashion or just craft craft careers in uh, comics somehow you know in creating in, in some creative endeavor you know steve and i have been trying to make things forever since we were kids uh in, in you know it's it's been it's been paying off a bit. We've been we've been progressing a lot. I felt really good about our first. I, like our first book is still like one of my proudest achievements in life. And then as as our books have been progressing, I feel like I'm more I'm more and more proud of our work as we're growing as creators. But I'm like becoming like more and more depressed that we're not like achieving a level of success that I'm like, Oh, please, please just give a, like, please, sir. I would like any amount of not having to work at retail, you know, like I, <laughs> that's and, and the it's, smallest portion will do small spot. And it's, it's so funny, but, but um, if you're interested in reading any of our previous books, I'll, I'll post all the links below. They should mostly be available on wehaveissues.com. Or I'm sorry, they should mostly be available at wehaveissuespodcast.com. You can also find our first book and our issue one of Deathless on uh, Amazon Kindle. So go check those out. But dude, it's been it's been interesting lately because the comics have kind of been on like for a while we were we were almost on like a sad, like a soft autopilot because I think we were forgiving each other's issues like week after week. We were like, okay, you're going to fail this week because I know you're working a lot and I'm going to fail this week because I was really sick or you're going to fail this week because you're, you know, working a lot and I'm going to fail this week because I get really depressed. <laughs> you know, and so we were just like, eh, it's mm -hmm. fine, it's fine. So like the accountability portion of our show has been like, oh, look, we're best friends. We're not going to hate each other. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we're not, you're not going to mm -hmm. yell at me if I don't get my writing done. But um, I feel like, part of that like we kind of fell into a slump for a while but recently Stephen, i think you in particular i mean i i will say i'm not i'm not gonna like go i'm not, I'm not gonna be down on myself and like 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 punch my face or whatever mm. i have i have gotten a lot done but you in particular have made a total like a 180 and like started doing your pages like crazy and they are looking beautiful um so can thank you, you sir Dude, they look incredible. So, like, how, first of all, um, you know, we start every show talking about what we did this week. So, like, what did you get done this week? I got, I think, I always forget what page it is now. I think it's five or six. But I got a page, I got that page done, which is a pretty awesome, another epic M just yeah. distorting reality around Deathless uh, oh, page. Dude, I, and... I love it so much. It's it's so great. Um, but I So, I want to ask, like, because I know you, you're still working. Like, you're still doing mm -hmm. all the things you yeah. were doing. Like previously on Steven's life, he, you, you've had it rough. You've been working a lot. You work a hard job. Um, so like, what have you done to kind of like overcome that, like, you know, that slump that you were in? So like, I was kind of giving in a little bit to playing my PlayStation. I think a little bit too much. Like I, th I got to that point where I felt like I was deserving of some like relaxation time, and yeah. I, I was. And you were. But then yeah. what happens is, is but then what happens is, is you really like that relaxation time, and you kind of fall into this slump where you're like, I'll do it, and then I'll start working on it Saturday, and then something happens. You know, yep. so so I don't get any of the 
the precursor time in throughout the week. So then right. when my day comes where I'm going to make the most progress, something will come up or something, yeah. you know, Oh, sudden plans with somebody oh. or something like that. And then yeah. there goes a big chunk of the biggest day I can work on this. And so I just basically, I'm like, you know, what? I got to stop. I'm just going to stop playing PlayStation and I'm just going to, you know, hang out with my family, do stuff like that. But then also just work on the comic before I go to bed at night a little yeah. bit, do this and that. And that's basically what I've been doing. So. Yeah, dude. I, and I mean, that is part of the, the accountability is like cutting out those, those little things. Like I found my, like I fell into a slump where I was very guilty of doing just the kind of like not doom scrolling per se, but like, like just casually, like mindlessly scrolling, looking for little, like, you know, I was basically like uh, pulling the, 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 what is slot machine of social media mm -hmm. where it was like, Oh, g give me like little bursts of dopamine. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these little bursts of dopamine. Got one. Ha ha. That person thought I was funny. And Oh yeah. That person thought I was funny. And like, I was doing that and I get, get like wrapped up in that reward system, you know? So I'm just like kind of conditioning myself to continue to scroll, continue to write, continue to scroll, continue to write. And I sit there and like, I was relaxing because, oh yeah, I worked and I spend up my whole, you know, all day with my son and then I'm cooking and cleaning and doing all the stuff around the house. And like, and it's just like exhausting. So then, yeah, I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm looking for those little rewards. And as rewarding as writing is, it's that, you know, delayed gratification, you know, that really gets mm. us. It's like, you know, you want the instant gratification of, you know, playing PlayStation. It feels good. Like, oh yeah, every time you progress at all, you get that reward, you know, you, you know, so it's, it's like mm. that constant that constant pulling this, you know, the slot machine where you you see it spin. You're like, I'm, I'm getting it. This is the closest I've ever been to being rich. And then also any any game with some sort of FOMO aspect to it is yes. just dangerous. Like Overwatch has like, you know, oh, the season's ending soon. If you don't win so many games, you're not going to get this skin. And it's like, dude, yeah, oh, you, you, you're like, yes, I got to do this. And then you're like, wait a second. Who the fuck cares about this? Yes. Skin? Like I'll tell against you. life as a whole, why <laughs> does this particular uh you know cosmetic that doesn't affect your your playing at all yep impact your entire life like it's crazy like those games are designed to do that so I'll, I'll tell you like the dumbest most embarrassing one for me is like recently i was like hey betting is legal in florida like i'm a, I, like that's a literal slot machine i can literally <laughs> I can literally do make it. money i can do this you know so i was like yeah what can i bet on i was like Oh, look, um, there's no football, which is the only sport I know anything about because I watch football with my dad. Like I like I've you know, that's the only sport I understand is football. I was like, oh, it's not I could actually this the only sport I could actually pick what a position yeah. is and kind of know what it means. <laughs> Dude, 100 percent. I know quarterback, running back and wide receiver. Anything else beyond that? <laughs> I don't know what a safety. That kind of. No, I don't I'll know. What tell a safety you, Dude, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You, you want to know how many positions I can name in basketball? Zero is the answer. <laughs> Zero, Steven. You want know? Is there, is there like a point guard? I don't yeah, know okay. I've about. learned now that there are four. Yeah, I know, I know I know at least two now. But but Steven, here's the thing. Like my entire experience with basketball was Space Jam. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only information any of us has. That's all the and information. Then, and then there was a I little was, spill, there was a little spillover Jordan obsession dude, because everyone I, liked Jordan in the it, 90s. Yeah, exactly. So like, okay, but like it gets it's so stupid because I'm like, I you know, here I am, uh this person who's never had I have zero interest in basketball. I don't care <laughs> at all about it. Right. And I'm just like, but what if? I learn about basketball and I can become rich. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, so I found myself like watching videos and I'm like, okay, I can study this enough. And now I then I then I was just like, yeah, okay. And but but here's the 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 really frustrating thing about it is like I won like four hundred dollars and I was like, oh no. I was like, oh this is this is actually a thing. I could actually do this. So I found myself, Steven, watching more basketball to study how players are so that I can learn who to bet on. So then I know what bets to make. And then I like, dude, I had that, that moment the other night where I was like, I don't like basketball. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically a job. I'm creating a, a job, job for myself. I was like, I've created a job and it's inconsistent. And my manager sucks because they take money from me sometimes. And I don't like it, you know? So like, I was just like, I was like, okay, can't do this. 
<clears throat> um, you know, which is just really funny. I had to like, I had to do the thing where I was like, oh wait, no, this is like a video game, but like instead of like like pretend slot machines, they're taking they're taking my money if I don't win. Oh, there's real just, risk involved there's, here. There's real risk. The, the stakes are too high, and it's basketball. <laughs> no, I was just thinking, like, if somebody walked up to me and said, "Oh, so what do you think about basketball?" Like when you brought up basketball, this is what my brain did. <laughs> I just want to run the people through. My brain was like Space Jam. Yep. I can name like two of the players from that movie besides Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, and one of them is Bill Dennis. Murray. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, Bill Murray. I think I'm like, wait, why are there or something? There's a severe shortage of Looney Tunes in this betting program. I don't understand. <laughs> Where the fuck is the option for bugs? <laughs> I want you somebody saying he's gonna shoot that ball. We're gonna be great. <laughs> Listen, DraftKings, I want 50 on Taz or I'm out. <laughs> so so I realized I was just like, okay, I can't. I can't bet on Looney Tunes. I'm out. I'm done. I'm not doing this. You know, uh, you know, so like it's I'm like, OK, I can use this time to do other stuff. So I'm trying really hard to be like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to take control of those moments. And of course, like you said, like we do deserve rest. Like we deserve, you know, like mm-hmm. we need rest and deserve rest. And we shouldn't just work ourselves to death, of course. That being said, I've always been someone who's um, I try to find ways to kind of give myself an excuse to enjoy things and also capitalize on it somehow or like use it in you know if there's any potential for like hey if i throw that into the world maybe maybe it'll become something you know as long as i'm i'm focusing on the joy of it you know like what brings me joy but like the fact that it exists in public now offers the opportunity for monetization or whatever it may be or just mm-hmm. just like you know just more more eyes on our show and book and all that stuff so like I started playing Zelda, you know, so I was like, I started playing Zelda on Twitch and people started watching. And now I'm like, I have over 50 uh, followers or whatever on Twitch. I'm like, ha ha, we're doing it, you know, and it's like, <clears throat> like, that's pretty cool. And then I'm, it occurred to me where I was like, man, our podcast views have been like down lately. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like, you know, if it's just like the luck of the draw, if it's just the time of year, if it's, just, you know, like, I don't know. And I try not to kill myself about it, but, but it occurred to me that I was like, we're going to want to make a movie soon, which like which we're going to have to launch a Kickstarter for. And we're it's going to need more eyes on it, you know. So how do we do that? And I remembered uh, a lot of our friends, you know, a lot of people I see on on social media who have YouTube channels uh, focus on like existing uh content like existing ip you know and they're like hey we're gonna talk about these you know these games we're gonna talk about these comic books these video games these movies whatever it may be and those tend to get a lot of views because people are searching for things they like you know and the things that they know already so i was like i watch movies with my movie group every single week i could easily set up my camera or just record after we record or whatever and just like make a quick video and as long you know if i keep it under 10 minutes or so it's not much effort for me honestly Mm -hmm. and then i can make a little channel and post about existing movies so that would hopefully get more eyes on us and on our movie, you know, it, it threw people who would otherwise not give our channel the time of day because we don't focus specifically on other, you know, other properties. I thought about that too, which is the thing, like other things that like I do, like, yeah. you know, there's an avid, like, I know people have long forgotten it, but there is like an avid Pokemon go situation. And like, I'm, I hit legend last season. Like that's like the top tier in PVP and everything on Pokemon go. Like I were nearly I, the very best. Like no one ever yeah. was. And like, and you know, I'm level 50. I'm like maxed out. And I do play that because it's a very easy thing to oh, okay. yeah. do on the side. Cause it's literally my phone. So if I'm at work and we're driving in between jobs, I'm, I can play and do stuff like yeah. that. So, but yeah, I've thought of that too. And it's like, how can we generate, you know, that kind of, you know, cause like, it's not that we're egotistical, but we just, you know, we're trying to run with the formula that was, you know, not just working, just who we are, but you're right. Like if we want to branch to more people, like you see what content is exactly, and maybe that is, I, th- I think a lot of the times we've, we've, we've steered clear. We, we do steer clear of a lot of um, social commentary because of just the world is, always going to suck. Everybody's going to give you some reason to hate the yeah. world we live in. But maybe one of the things that we're missing and lacking really is just the commentary on the culture that we are in. Like yeah. 
we're not commenting on what's going on with the Avengers in the comics or like what's what's going mm. on with X-Men right now or, mm. you know, what who's writing this and what, why do you like this writer versus that? And like, who's the new one? I, mean, I don't know. Maybe there is a little culture there we could grow to. Yeah. On, on this very podcast is like that's, that's talking true. more about actual comics, you know? Yeah. No, dude, that's that's definitely true. And I I think the problem that you and I have whenever we try to make like little changes is we notice like the dips the, yes in, ver- in in various viewerships and like you know people ask people ask us all the time if they can be on our podcast they you know people with indie comics uh constantly message us and are like hey are you looking for guests we'd like to be on your show and we can promote our book the problem is almost every time we've had guests on the, our views drop because people don't tend to unfortunately people don't tend to show up for the for interviews of other creators for whatever reason at least not on people, our people show, just right? want to people want to see anthony and steven talk to anthony and steven because yeah. there, there is like because there really is a genuine conversation happening between us because you and i don't get to see each other so yeah. this literally this podcast has always been from the start literally us just kind of catching up on our lives for you sure. know it's another thing i've noticed too is that before we start recording we end up talking sometimes for five or ten minutes about a lot of good stuff i know and then we and then we start recording so i think we just need to start like doing I, the introduction and then flow it and just yeah. like old school yeah dude and it, it's it's just so interesting because like i know i know like if you're watching right now and you want more uh comic book like conversation and content from us let us know in the in, let us know in the comments we're interested we want to know what you're interested in because we're always going to do the basic stuff we're always going to talk about our book in the beginning we're always going to talk about what we're doing in the end and yeah we're going to share life stuff i'm like steven i'm freaking i'm okay i'm not how do i how do i, how do I put this i'm not dating steven i'm not dating i'm oh I'm, no what are you I'm, doing <laughs> What are you doing, Steven? I'm not. Dating. I know my best friend. My best friend will give me as much information around the epicenter of what he's about to say to 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 make me an informed <laughs> consumer of what he's about to sell me. That's and amazing. but so, so <laughs> no, so I'm not. I'm not dating. What I'm doing is I'm Stephen. Okay. Listen, family, if you're watching this right now, just shut it off. Uh, future future children, just shut it off. Just <laughs> shut it off right now. Um, just shut off. Atlas, go to bed. Go to Atlas, bed. Go to bed. <laughs> Atlas, go to bed. Just go to bed. Don't, don't. Cambria and Chase, you've probably seen or heard way worse because you yeah, guys are the animals and you, you do your own research. And <laughs> Steven, I can't, like, like I find my, I find myself just, just, just freaking butt gazing, Steven. I'm just like, like, I don't even mean to. I'm just like, <laughs> like, I'm just, cha. And it's, it's the worst. And I don't. I don't want that. Steven, the other day I looked at like an old man's butt. And I was like, why? Why did you do that? What does that happen? Dude, like, what? when that <laughs> happens to be like a, like a dude, I, I recognize it as a dude right away. And I'm just like, why is his butt so good? <laughs> and I'm just like, but, 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 but like, why? Why would, why, why would this be on this, this individual? I'm so, I'm so jealous of his, his back. <laughs> his, his backyard situation. It's just so, so not, it's voluptuous. Um, but, <laughs> dude it's just it's been frustrating because i've been actively trying to avoid uh those things which which i know um you know we all have various urges and you know like predilections and interests and and stuff and and it's you can't always ignore it you can't it's like you know a self-deception to an extent you know like at some point you have to be like all right i have to give in to something you know but i've been and let's just say like i've been like i've been (laughs) I've been trying to be the master of my domain, Stephen. Um, Ooh, yeah, dude. Outside I just, of Lent, well, yeah, outside over, of, buddy. I, yeah, <laughs> just, well, just because I, I don't know. I was like, I, I have more things I want to do. I want like so. I've been like actively avoiding like general uh, like pornography and like stuff like you know, not for any like moral reasons, just for like, hey, I don't want to get, I don't want to like like get you know sucked down that drain. I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna write. I'm going to focus. I'm going to make videos. I'm going to do, I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to, you know, because I, I realized I what like, I wasn't watching movies. I wasn't really like consuming any new media. I was just scrolling mindlessly. And then like, I'd be like, Oh, look at this. Like, look at this butt on Facebook. I, why am I seeing this? All right, look, there's another one. And like, yes, I'm totally aware that like the, we condition our algorithms by the length of time we sit on any particular video, but here's the <laughs> thing. I'm going to sit on a video 
that I want to sit on me. No, damn it. This is a bad, <laughs> joke. A bad joke. I want it to sit on. No, no stop. stop. <laughs> That's, but, but. <laughs> You know what I was just thinking about when you said, you know, like, you probably, you know, like, butts, this and that. Man, my dad's from Pennsylvania. Why of all states did he choose Florida, the sandal capital of the world? This motherfucker is a genius. <laughs> you have such Steven, a good point. I do, though. I mean, previously on Steven's Dad Life. Feet. Feet. <laughs> I don't think I've ever told the the Braden and Foot. Have I told the Braden and Foot story? I think you have. I think you have one. Yeah, you have. I think you. you or was it? Was it? On, yeah, it was probably on. Don't make. No, I don't think I did do it on. Don't make it weird. I, I think, think we did, did it, do it here. Yeah, we did it here. I think there was one time where we cut it, and then the next time you you were just like, just leave it, and we did it. Just I, leave it. Yeah, it's time for the people but, to know. But yeah, Stephen's dad. He is. He is interesting. Uh, kinks. So it's it's great. He's great. He's. Great. Some would say they're basic kinks, but he is. He is. I don't know why you why you all are finding out the truths that I've had to live with for as long as I've had to live with them. But welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the back. Welcome to the back. <laughs> so, dude, I yeah. So I you know I've been going through. Um, I'm trying. Basically, what I've been doing is trying to find every free moment I can to do the thing that I think is the best thing for me and us in those moments. You know, and like yeah, sometimes it's going to be rest or like watching movies or whatever it may be. But like. I'm also freaking Steven. I, I hate it. I wish there was some kind of switch where I'd just be like, like, I'm so jealous of anyone who's not like, Oh, look a butt. Like, I don't want it. I don't like if, if I could just shut that down, I, you know, but yeah, dude, I don't know. I don't really, it sucks because I've, I, I'm, I don't know if I even believe that it's possible for people to be like casually date. Any, you know, like I like I know people say they do, and like people are in various uh levels of open relationships and all that. And that's that's great for them. Whatever works for you, I don't, you know, that's fantastic. I'm saying for me, I've never seen it outside of like some sort of a weird manipulation or like watching. You know, like there always seems to be some sort of expectation or manipulation. I'm just like, what's happening? As someone who's been in a relationship for as long as he's been an adult, yeah. um, as a as a casual observer. As a non-judgmental casual observer, I believe from what I've witnessed in casual encounters with my multitudes of friends, social friends, and situations like that, is they all seem to be okay or good until there's some sort of misunderstanding of feeling yeah. or how much feeling or how much little feeling, and then there's problems. Even, yeah, yeah like in almost every situation, and like, which is bound to happen in any relationship. I'm not saying, yeah. you know, what I have is, you know, I'm not even trying to say that. But what of I'm course. saying is, I don't think, I don't think there really is true casual. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's tough. There is, a, there is an intent, you know, in, in intent, there's, there's true casual. But somebody, somebody is giving more than somebody else at every time. Right. You know? and it's, well, I, I really do. It seems that it's just more complicated than anyone would ever want it to be in any yeah. situation. And it's even know, if the person that is, ends up giving more is never intended to give more. It's right. just the way of the unfortunately the world yeah. sometimes. Like yeah, and I, I your I, feelings I, grow because of the intimacy or something like that. Yeah, you know? and and to be honest with you, I'm afraid of either side of it. I am afraid of being the one who like, hey, oh gosh, now I have these feelings for a person, or being the one who's like okay, Anthony, you know what this is. This is just a thing where we don't have feelings. So I can be like, I'm just like, I separate myself and I compartmentalize in such a way. And then now someone has feelings for me and they get hurt. And now I'm a narcissist and, a, you know, like I'm, I'm this terrible manipulator or whatever it is. Uh, when like, I was just like, I was just doing the thing that we promised that we would do, you know, I'm just like, you know, cause I'm, I'm, just, I'm a I'm freaking weird robot person. I don't like, I don't know how to navigate some of those waters. So I don't. So what I do instead is I make silly videos and, you know, podcasts and comic books and write a movie. Speaking of which Steven. So this week I was working on the Kickstarter for the movie. For those of you who don't know, Steve and I are going to be making a vampire breakup horror comedy movie called Stakeout. We recently, we wrote a short script and we did a whole live table read with a full cast and everything. You can find, you know, find that in our channel below. And 
I was like, I, Steven, I have an idea. I'm going to make this into a freaking feature. I want to make a feature movie. I've always wanted to make a feature film and I'm going to do it. So, so I did it. I wrote it. And I was like, I feel really good about it. But now, Steven, I'm looking through this Kickstarter and I was like, okay, we have to, we have to come up with an amount to ask people for, you know? Mm-hmm. And I find myself just like circling because I'm terrified. I'm scared that we're not going to make it, you know? And I, I you're know- afraid to ask for too much, but then yes. you're afraid to ask for too little and then not be able to pro- like bring any promise with the exactly. amount you've asked. Exactly. So if I ask, so yeah, those, that's precisely my fear, dude. Like I'm afraid. Here's the thing. We ask for too much. What if we don't meet the goal? Of course, that's a natural fear. If we ask for too little, we're not going to be able to produce the movie that I know we can produce, you know? And that's, that's the, that's really the worst side of it. I'd rather shoot for the stars and try to make a movie that's good than just try to shoot for the middle and make a movie that no one's going to like anyway, or at least I think people will enjoy it just because like, it'll be fun to watch, you know, whatever nonsense we come up with, you know, but like, I think, I think the story's there. I think the dialogue's there. I think you and I as characters are going to be fun. I hope, you know, like I, I'm nervous about it, but like, I think we can do it. I think I've like, you've read some of the, the, uh, Oh dude, it's funny. And like, I thank you. Like, dude, I think, I think it's us enough that like, as we talk through it, um, I like, and I have a few parts in mind where I'm like, oh yeah, this is basically like a line arama sort of situation. We'll be able to like kind of spitball a little bit here. We could change stuff here. And I, like, and that's fine. You know, I'm not, I'm not going like being sacred. We, you know, the script isn't like some sacred document or whatever, but I do think that it has promise and I think it's good. And I, I think it might be, it'll be good enough that even if, uh, we're we aren't capable of filming like to the level that I'm hoping we can. The dialogue and our performances will hopefully be fun, you know, and I think it'll be enjoyable for anyone who watches it. But that being said, I want it to be good. I want it to be <clears throat> I want to make a good movie. You know, I want to make something that people will actually like and enjoy. I want to share with their friends. And it won't just be these incredible people who made it this far in the episode, which by the way, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. We already know who, who, who it is. Yeah. We know all of you. Thank you so much for being a part of our colony. We really freaking appreciate you and we love you. And we're so glad that you've stuck with us for 100, 188 episodes now. And I, you know, we do appreciate you. And I know every once in a while we talk about, you know, how frustrating it is to our numbers to dip and you know, all of that, but like, we really do appreciate those of you who just stick around with us. So, and we, and we know you're going to show up for the, the movie, no matter, you know, what level, it is so if you have opinions on it if you think you know we should shoot for the stars let us know if you think another option steve another option i was considering was we could launch a kickstarter for a short you know and just make a short version of you know what i was thinking too what if we did like episodic like um segment like we're talking like if things don't pan out for the big but once some once every week or so drop like a part of the movie like film it, like film yeah. it almost Clerks format style. Where you know, Clerks is very sketch built. You know, like oh, yeah. the the way that movie's edited is its sections oh, more so sure. than acts. Like it, I mean, it does have acts, but it yeah. isn't. It's a bunch of sketches, is what it feels like. Yeah. Um, but like just film like different sketches and then upload them to YouTube. You know what I'm saying? On yeah. the We Have Issues podcast channel, maybe that generates enough buzz too. Yeah, well, um, also, I I also want to let you know. I don't know if it's something you'll be interested in, but I was talking to Brandon about possibly being one of the cameramen. Yeah. And he granted, I don't know like what he would charge or like how much, but like Adam has a bunch of 4k, 5k cameras and like, he's got like cameramen and stuff like that. So that, that that, I'm not sure if that would save us money in the, in the idea of like, equipment but he's got lighting he's got cameras and all that so i mean that's something we can talk about oh absolutely dude brandon and adam yeah that could that could be cool i mean it would be and adam probably could play the vampire just putting it out there could he dude well actually last week you said something uh where you were talking about like a mask and i was like maybe it could be a mask because honestly Mm -hmm. the vampire needs minimal movement with his jaw he does like the more i thought about it i was like i specifically wrote the character to not have lines so the character doesn't have to be able to like you know move uh in with like you don't have to be able to articulate your lips in a way that looks like you're speaking words you just have to be able to grunt and move your jaw a little so if we we could find adapt or make a mask um and and actually like that might be the easiest route to just make kind of a movable mask i mean most masks you can just kind of open and close your mouth which is all the character would have to do you know so it's 
it's very possible. You know, I was, just, I was thinking about it. I was like, it's you very- could even like, it, or just get like a mask that has a, even if we have to like conjoin two masks, so yes. that the top, you just cut the it. Top, cut we can butt, build yeah. the, the, you know, yeah, dude, I was looking on YouTube at like how you how to make like jointed masks and stuff. And it's not very difficult. Like it seems very possible um, to make from scratch. But also like I know we can kind of Frankenstein something together. You know, the way that Michael Myers, you know, the My- Michael Myers mask was just a William Shatner mask turned inside out and spray painted. We could do something mm. and manipulate, you know, in such a way. My uncle is also uh, really good with making masks and, you know, all in molding and all that stuff. And he has a 3D printer that we could use, which, by mm. the way, he also has a 3D printer that we could use for deathless purposes at some point. So we need to like we yeah. Talk to him about that. Does he so. does he know how to like? Does I, he's artistic too? So like, does he know how to like design like three D yeah. files and all of that too? Yeah, because I can like generate models and stuff. Like what what would think what we're thinking? Barrel, I think, is the go to for that. Oh yeah, oh, I yeah. wish we had a three D printer for the knights. The knights, I think people would have loved the knights for issue two. Yeah. Oh, that's true. God. All right, all, Every week all... oh, we wait, wait, wait. did to okay. Hang on. No, wait, wait. So this is all part of the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, for those of you joining us for the first time, every once in a while, Steve and I will take questions from the, you know, from the audience on Twitter. You can join us on uh, twitter.com slash x.com, whatever it is. Just find us on Twitter. It's, it's Stevie Wildcard, Anthony Lafisi, and we have issues pod. And you can ask us whatever you want. Uh, this, every time we do it, we, we call it questions from the colony. Steven, hit us with that song. Your heart beating fast. Like an ostrich running through the forest. I know they actually live on savannas because you can't bury your head in sand in the forest. <laughs> Questions from the <laughs> colony involving Stephen and Anthony. We're gonna answer all your questions. Questions from the colony. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> So, fantastic, Stephen. I love it. Just like every other time. Um, so this week, so this week we have, we have a handful of questions. So let's get them. So uh, Bree asked us, "Hmm, how pumped should I be for issue one of Deathless to arrive in the mail? Because I'm pretty pumped." Bree, you should be so stoked for issue one. I hope you love issue one as much as we love issue one, and then you immediately order issue two. Yeah, um, I have to put the physical copies of issue two on the website because I realized because of Brie that I still haven't done that. And we have you know, physical copies. Of issue. Oh, that's the most. Yeah, so we, it, we need to put that up on there. I will put those on the website. That's one of the things I'm going to do this week. Uh, I'm going to put the issue twos going up on the website and do it tomorrow. Uh, but Brie, you should definitely be excited. I'm so glad that you ordered it. Uh, thank you so much. And for those of you who are interested, you can check out. You know, I, w- I actually have it packaged and I was going to I was going to bring it and ship it tomorrow. Should I just slide in a copy of issue two for Brie? Yes. Yes, you should. Oh, okay. Right, we'll <laughs> yes, um, Brie, Stephen is going to... Stephen, you know what you should do? You should slide in a copy of issue two for Brie specifically. It was my idea. <laughs> it was because just I... Had, th- this is the unfortunate, unfortunate, like, lack of power I have in this situation. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, the, I think, like, what makes me happy about that is I always just leave it all in anyway. And then I'm like, ha, 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 I did <laughs> I made a joke. <laughs> yeah. But, um, all right, so let's see. I, I just imagine you, like, like I'm a kind god. <laughs> 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 it seems like I left it on. <laughs> Oh, Stephen, you're lucky. I'm lazy. I cut less than <laughs> this episode. Um, okay, our one of our close friends, uh, Jackson Howell, asked if you and if you and or Stephen could play any superhero from Marvel or DC, who would it be and why? I already know Stephen's answer is Deadpool. Is it Stephen? Is it so? Okay, like if I could play anyone, like here's the thing about how my brain works. Like I'm like this is a hypothetical situation where he it's wants to heaven. play Blade. He's Blade. No, no. <laughs> but this is a hypothetical situation where it's all positive. Like there's there can't be any negative because this no. is a this is a fake world that's just fake all world. good, happy. Of course. But I'm still in this fake hypothetical. Like people are gonna make fun of me for really dress up as Deadpool because I am yeah. not really Deadpool size. So I want to be the sexiest variation of the Blob, like just. Fred Dukes just Fred Dukes. I mean, Dukes, huh? I get it, but like, dude, you could pull off freaking Sabretooth pretty awesome. Ooh, Sabretooth would be pretty cool. Dude, I could probably do Sabretooth. You could do like a sweet Sabretooth. Especially if it was like off. fur coat Sabretooth. Yes. Yeah, like, you sure, know. Dude. Like, I could see that 100%. What was it? Taylor Main or uh, was that who did it? Oh, the, for the original one? For the, the movie? Wrestler? No. 
Who did Lee it? Schreiber was Lee Schreiber, I know Lee was, Schreiber was really good. Yeah. And that but, was like my favorite Sabretooth. Dude, you could totally pull that off. I who would I play? Sabretooth I wish would be cool. Yeah, for, dude, for sure. Um, okay. Let me think. I mean, of course, like I'd want to play Gambit if I could pull that off. That would be sweet, but I'd also have to do like, I feel like you could pull Gambit like, off. That would, that would be pretty cool. Like, I mean, I I, I'm like, oh, let me choose all the people with a weird accent, you know, with accents I can't do. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> but like it would be cool. Like I, I like it would be cool to play Nightcrawler. That would be fun, you know, like just like those himself, kind of yeah. dude. Yeah. Night, I actually tweeted that recently. How I feel like Nightcrawler, even though he is featured in a lot of X Men media, I still feel like he's criminally underused dude, because of how much like. He's so well, cool. how much like you can do with that character. It's just I, so cool. It, it, it and, like not only that, it's so visibly satisfying, like in a cinematic world in which like we're looking for powers that are fun to watch on screen. And it's like some are some are hard to get across. Like, you know, stretchy powers aren't always the most convincing, no matter how good you are at, you know, CG. A lot of it looks silly, you know, and, you know, like, and a lot of powers are similar. And a lot of things just don't look as cinematic, you know, Um Bamfing the with like the bright cool like neon pink like mist like oof so cool looking dude we need I mean that. X2 X2 was a great movie anyways but anyone that's seen it the nightcrawler sequence of the opening oh, of that movie is like one the of the, is a fan favorite by everybody 100%. I mean like that's that was the scene do 100% um, but yeah Sabretooth I guess Sabretooth and Gambit it's yeah. a new movie That'd be pretty cool we're, we're going to be X-Men that's what we're doing um so JM uh, Goldmeyer asked cake or death cake or death yeah i mean those are our options steven that's do you want cake or do you want death i mean which one steven? <laughs> can i die by eating said cake? i was gonna say steven go ahead and say cake because the cake is made of death <laughs> <laughs> obviously Ch- i will have death. chocolate trace leches cake that's good <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's oh what kind of cake would i have i'm not a huge cake guy yeah i'll take, I'm not- take death no i'm just kidding <laughs> You know, just like, like, just Stanley, like... Stanley said it in the office. He goes, taste change. I only like baklava now. But like, I kind of feel that, Stanley. Like, yeah, yeah, I only I'm like like little fancy desserts now. Like, I'm not just going to get crazy over a yellow yellow cake. Yeah, no, no. We've talked about that in the past. Where it was like, why? when did lemon become a thing that I enjoy? Yeah, I love lemon. Right lemon, now. Curds, <laughs> lemon curd, whatever. Just <clears throat> Oh, here's a here's an important question for it's it's our lore, Stephen. Daily Downing. Mm. Daily Downing asked, Daily's why... awesome, by the way. Oh, Daily is fantastic. Uh, we love you, Daily. She asked, why an ostrich as the colony mascot? Maybe I missed it from earlier stuff, but I do wonder. Why an ostrich? Steve? Episode why seven, we... I believe. Yeah, episode right. step. If you want, episode seven will give you the full background, but it definitely grew throughout the episode. So, I mean, like oh. seven would only give you the origin story. It would be like, you know, it'd be like finding out that Captain America got the super soldier serum, but then never seeing him get frozen or unthought or fighting fan, you know, and none of that happened, you know? Um, Basically I was working in Venice, which is about an hour from where I personally live, but I was working in Venice and I saw ostriches and I do what I do when I'm like in between jobs is I just Google search a bunch of stuff. And like, I just gained a lot of information on how to like farm raise ostriches all because I saw some farm in Florida had ostriches and that joke just been, I mean, it just kept rolling and eventually became the ostrich colony. And there was like Anthony and I, so basically from there, Anthony and I were actually raising these ostriches, not for meat or leather, but to make them battle birds yep. and to fight other ostrich farms what on our battles. Ostriches. Yeah. What else are you going to do? You're going to joust on them. That's exactly what we're going to do. Armor plated ostriches. So yeah, and that's, yeah, so that's, they became our mascot from there and they still are. You know, not to I mention, know. I, I've always felt that it kind of uh, metaphorically works with like what we do here because you could see us as a show called a We Have Issues. Yet, like, like Steven said earlier, we don't talk about social issues or like important worldly issues because for various reasons. But you could see us as sticking our heads in the sand, which we aren't. But it's a, a joke. It's a joke, everyone. But it works and it's fun. But, but it works. Yeah, that's why. Um. Let me see. Abby asked, what's the weirdest thing you'd put peanut butter on and still eat it? The weird. So I have to like come up with this right now. Yep. I've had peanut butter on a cheeseburger. It was okay. That was a uh, Twilight Zone story. Yep. How was it? Any good? 
Yeah, well, I think it was a bacon cheeseburger. So the oh. bacon, of course, bacon and peanut butter actually go really well together because yeah. of the smoky flavors mm-hmm. and the nutty flavors. Oh. It works. Mm-hmm. Um, but the weirdest thing I would, well, what would be what's peanut butter is so neutral? <clears throat> it is. I mean, you can you can dip celery in it. I mean, you can you can dip apples in peanut butter. So you got fruit and veggie covered. Obviously, you can eat it with bacon if you wanted to. What what what's I guess like peanut butter on like I don't know, like like peanut butter f- like whiskey and like a lemonade would probably suck. Who it would probably suck and you drink it anyway, huh? <laughs> like you drink still it, go with it. I can't, so, but like my, my what friend, would peanut butter suck with? I okay, don't but, even know if but it's the question Abby's asking is like, what's the weirdest thing you'd put peanut butter on and still like go for it anyway? Like you'd still do it. Like it wouldn't make you throw up. You wouldn't be like, you know, it wouldn't be you'd probably be like, eh, I don't know if this is going to be good, but you'd still try it. My friend at work had, I, a, had one that he was trying. My friend Oscar said, what about sushi? And I was like, that's a, that's an interesting point because like, and, and, and like he said it kind of like, it wouldn't. It's yeah, almost like a peanut sauce. That's right? what I was gonna say. So I said, I was like, wait, that's kind of like a pad thai sushi situation, mm-hmm. right? Like you're creating a peanut sauce with peanut butter. We need to open up a restaurant, Anthony. Yeah, and like yes, pad thai because sushi. not to me- yeah, not to mention like I mean, fish is like it has that jelly texture, so you're already you're kind of creating this like peanut butter jelly situation, and it's depending on the sauces and the way the you know the sushi is. You just put together. It, I would, I would, eat, I would eat peanut butter and sushi. I think that's yeah. the weirdest thing. I, I would, I would eat. With yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you could go, you could go as simple as just the rice roll with peanut butter and jelly inside, like you know, just peanut butter. Peanut that butter, actually kind of sounds good, doesn't peanut it? Peanut butter, jelly, and sushi. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little and bit. instead of the seaweed sheet, instead of the seaweed, you use like graham cracker and you roll it. Oh, Stephen, I kind of want to try that now. I kind of want to try that. Oof. Okay. All right. Let's see who's next. We only have a few more. Okay. Catman Jones has a couple, two questions. First is where can, where can one ethically source a vampire? Well, if you want my opinion, those soul suckers, you can source them from wherever you want because they should be as good as dead. (laughs) However, I think if, I think if they were people, vampires, there's no ethical way to actually do it. However, if they're like Buffy demon spawn, like if there are like hell vampires that just come out of hell, you can ethically source vampires from hell all day. Mm-hmm. There's no ethic. There's no ethics there. Okay. Catman Jones also asked, "What job or jobs would Santa Claus be terrible at?" Now, Stephen, obviously Santa Claus would be a fantastic ninja, excellent thief, incredible in an Ocean's Eleven esque heist situation. If you think about it, mm-hmm. right? Like. Although he's big, jolly, wearing kind of like jingly things, he's never been caught or seen. Like better, better than I dare, dare say, better than Bigfoot he is at stealth. And then you just take a screwdriver and you change the magic on your Santa sack. And yeah. suddenly, instead of carrying toys for every child, it's carrying any weapon he can possibly imagine. Yes, dude. Santa Claus pulled straight assassin. out of his sack. No, no. Oh, my God. Santa... Santa assassin is would be so good. The Santa assassin would Santa, be incredible. And like the elves build the weapons. He has like a, yes. like a, elf, oh, it's like a weapon like... workshop. Oh my God, mm. Steven, it would be so incredible. Uh, however, the question is, what would he be bad at though? And since he's so magical, I'm just like, what would he be? He would be bad at, you know, I mean, like grinching it up. Like he'd be bad at making people miserable because he's naturally, uh, you know, this jolly this, guy. Jolly guy is what he is. He is made of Christmas magic and giving. I got it. Santa would be a horrible drama actor. <laughs> I like it. Um, <laughs> oh, what's that show? Um, I think you should leave. Santa is yeah. actually an actor who is is in a movie, and he's like <laughs> he refuses to let people talk about the fact that he's Santa. <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's a good one. That's a that's a really good one. All right, let me see. In the shed with Wes Anderson asked, "What superhero would make the best sandwich, and why?" I would eat mm. Wonder Woman. That, was that the question? Whoa, <laughs> that is loaded, especially with earlier in the episode talk, like all the talk. I'm sorry, yeah, I had to make that joke. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> she got you with the last of truth. You had to, you had to say what you had to say. Um, no, who but who, taste, okay, okay. So I mean, that, not who would taste the best. What character? What superhero would make the best sandwich? I think it would be. Probably oh, Batman, Batman would make. 
I think so. I think Batman would, be, would make. He would do the research. Yeah. That's okay, exactly okay. What it is. You guys, you can say whatever you want, but I'm going to take Batman with two weeks of prep. Okay. <laughs> Batman with prep. Batman with prep. He's, Batman with prep. He's beating Gordon Ramsay in a cooking competition. Okay. That's ex- thank you. That's exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what I had in mind. Like you can't beat someone who's like willing because like. Yes, I know there there are certain uh, there are certain techniques and such, but a lot of cooking is measuring and just following instructions, you know. And Alfred's like, been making me Alfred's been making me croque monsieur since I was a child. <laughs> so okay, okay. <clears throat> um, let me see. The David Stoker asked if you had to choose one of these for your friend to fight, which I guess you have to choose something for me. I have to choose something for you. Uh, which would it be? Fight a shark with only a knife or fight a bear with only a baseball bat? What kind of bear is my question? And what kind of shark is my question? First of all, you didn't specify. So I would personally, just to give it the extremes. Yes. I would personally rather fight a great white with a knife yeah, than a polar bear with, what? than a polar bear with a bat. What, 100%. If it's, now here's the thing. If it's a black bear versus like a tiger shark or whatever, I'm going black bear. I'm you- fighting oh! the black bear. <laughs> I'm a, Unfortunately, it's going to be the most brutal. Like yeah. they're going to have to slow down the footage and put like, like, you know, the most hardest song to it while I'm beating that black bear to death because like, <laughs> like that black bear has no chance, unfortunately. No, but no, I, I polar like bear, bad. I don't think there's a weapon you could give me where I feel like I would have a chance against a polar bear. No, or a grizzly. Like, honestly, like, I don't know those, like, nope, I'm just like, I do not. I've seen those things just like in the one, like, no. Nope, no, thank you. I will. They literally like they slap your face off. Like, <laughs> like could you imagine <laughs> you with the John Travolta and or Nick Cage? And yeah, not a fan. Uh, <laughs> like they've been practicing the face off surgery for for a millennia. Oh. And like, could you imagine getting slapped by something and half your face is gone? No, I'm good. Okay, yeah, dude. So I, I'm pretty sure. We know our answers here, yeah, <laughs> because we're both fighting sharks. <laughs> like, there's no anything, chance. anything, anything greater than a black bear. We're fighting the shark. I don't yeah. care what kind of shark it is. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I, dude, I would rather fight a megalodon. Like, because, because I, I think we both have the same idea where it's like, I know we can't, but you feel like you can dodge it. <laughs> or <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. in my head, this is what it was. <laughs> in my head it was the side stab bro that was my strategy we both we both think we can dodge a shark we can't we can't we would die so bad i have no swimming capabilities so i just it was so funny but that's, so, that's literally like my head's like Oh, oh, stab. oh yeah i win like, like we both think we're peter parker in the water like, either one of us is considering it thrashing immediately at us as we stab it either we're just like no it has to keep swimming straight oh, it, it loses i do it i do it, I do it. Okay. very simple very simple but effective technique <laughs> The bear, and then my the bear in my head was just me like hitting and it doing nothing. Like, it was just, like, dude. I, like, I I do feel like I do feel like trying to fight a bear in real life would be like fighting anyone in a dream, like in a nightmare, right? You know yes. what I mean? Just like no matter what you're doing, like, like ev- no as way. hard as you hit it, it feels like you're hitting it. Like uh. that was funny. <laughs> That was one of those things, like, I said it, and I was confident in it, and I just was right. I was like, all right. It was perfect. That's all right. exactly, exactly what I was imagining. <laughs> all right. For our final round of questions, uh, Paige asked, if you could absorb the talent of others, who would you choose? Who? I can just absorb it? Yeah. Do I get to absorb, like, a few people? I don't know. What, do you, like, what are our roles here? It's I want like, three. Others. How many? How many? You want three? I'm going to I'm take Jackie Chan. Got it. Awesome. I'm then going to take who who's got some other good powers. Okay. Okay. Um, Jack, it's all fighting. Jackie Chan, all fighting. <laughs> Mike Tyson in his prime. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. And then I don't know. Einstein in his prime. So I'm Ooh, just like, nice, super strong, but I'm like, hmm, E equals MC. And I'm oh. just like, <laughs> okay. So I'm, I'm going to be fighting Steven. You ask. I'm going to wait for Steven to absorb all of them. And then I'm going to absorb Steven. That's one. 
<laughs> no, no. Wait, is this a Peter Petrelli or a Siler situation where one of you us has to eat the brains? Ooh, I mean, it does say you absorb the talent of. Are we space jamming them? Are we taking their powers <laughs> and they no longer have them? That seems evil. You know, like that's. Dude, not- all I hope is that when we take the powers, fly like an eagle plays in the background. <laughs> And we get like these okay, slow mo, like. Okay, that's actually a really interesting question because, like, you have to think of, if you could take them, if you had to space jam someone, right? Who would you space jam? Ooh. Who am I? Just look over at, like, just look over at Tyson and be like, I'm sorry, little one. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay 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 uh page's next question was what is your favorite movie monster makeup steven Ooh, hmm. like out of like the horror movies that steven has actually seen i'm just going to include costumes too um one of my favorite horror it was actually more of an action but it was a horror movie it was 13 ghosts i loved all the costume and makeup designs it, it in 13 looks, yeah those characters were awesome they all they're very iconic and cool for for, sure. for a bunch of non slasher characters, like for a bunch of just random ghosts, every ghost was pretty awesome and unique. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, mine favorite monster movie monster makeup probably. I mean, all of the Monster Squad monsters are always my favorite. They really are just naturally. Um, aside from outside of Monster Squad, my favorite of all time monster movie makeup is the the wolf form of dracula and bram stoker's dracula because I oh think, the one that's like, banging like, dude is that yes the one that's banging yes yeah dude because it's like the coolest looking werewolf in a vampire movie it's a vampire it's a vampire is the coolest yeah. looking werewolf it is it still to this day one of my favorite looking because you and i used to have conversations about that how like every movie we watch just doesn't quite get werewolves right and yeah. i still can't really explain what a right werewolf is but the closest thing is definitely bram stoker for some yeah reason. the vampire movie <laughs> May, I mean, dude after after stakeout we should make a freaking werewolf movie <laughs> just just go for it all right just let do me it. all right let me see um if you could be dropped into any of your favorite movies which would you which one would you choose and why Ooh, dropped into a movie so lost boys is obviously one of my favorites i also really like the romeo and juliet remake with leonardo dicaprio and claire danes yeah but both of those movies seem like really sad places to be dropped into right v for vendetta also very sad place to be then dropped again, into. okay steven I'll t- like i mean i when you said lost boys i was like well we could just find vampires drink their blood and then never drink human blood and we just have vampire powers and we'd be fine it just cuts to us david's like how are your how are your maggots michael yeah yeah maggots maggots like, ah, no, 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 no. give me the blood <laughs> give me the blood <laughs> i'm gonna go bite someone as soon as you give it to me as soon as you give it to me i'm confirming <laughs> i promise i'm going full vamp no matter what i promise 50 years later have you guys have you guys ever you ever tried just like nibbling on something? No, 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 no. You, <laughs> not, not even once. You imagine, like, you know, how pissed we'd be if we accidentally somehow got some blood in our mouth. Like, oh you know, man, I'm a full vampire. <laughs> You're a full vampire. I'm a freaking vampire now. <laughs> my best friend, a goddamn. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things that like has I've never seen happen in a movie, but would be so cool is if Stephen, you know how like like in Lost Boys if the vampire who sired you dies or like the head vampire dies or whatever, uh, you know, you're you're human again, you know, why do we never see a vampire? Who's just like, "Ah, and then suddenly it's just like Craig. And they're like, (laughs) he's like, no. And he calls, he's like, Hey, wait, Tim's dead. No, (laughs) Tim, who got him? Dude was like, he drank too much blood wine and he fell on a freaking wooden fence. No. no, wait, I have to get a job now? I have to get a... Wait, is, it, is anyone... Who's still a vampire? We need to get turned. And then it's just like them trying to become a vampire again. Like, just like, because like, why? You would have to, right? Unless the years catch up with you and you become dust, right? I mean, that's another option. I don't know. It depends on the... the that would be crazy if, like, you suddenly aged, right? You Just out of nowhere, imagine you're just, like, this fierce vampire, like, young and sexy and scary and, like, trying, like, about to kill someone. And suddenly you're just like... Wait, what? And just like fading? Like, why is this? Oh, Tim's dead. And then you just fall. Ah, <laughs> like, oh, right. oh, shit. And imagine, Steven, if you and I 
saw that happen. Like, like imagine seeing a vampire for the first time being like, dude, I just had a pretty cool idea. What? Imagine like a super badass vampire. Like Mm -hmm. he's a freaking like monster of a man. Like, Think like anime levels of like he just goes in and just destroys entire villages and like loves being what he is, right? Yeah. And like they're like, we can't kill him head on. We gotta find the one that he, you know, that changed yeah. him to kill yeah. him. And dude, like, what if that vampire was like so badass and so powerful that like he like captured his head vampire and like has it like locked away? Like oh, almost I like, see like, what you're like that's like, cool. You know, like, yeah, he's captured his like creator and like yeah. you can't find it because he's like completely sealed it behind because he's such a, like a, just a badass so no dude that's that's freaking that's really cool and you know we, we talk, i think we talked about this once in a podcast before because i was like if if i was a vampire in that situation i would just rip out my own heart and put it somewhere right like you don't if, need it right if you don't need it like depending on the vampire biology if if it's one of those things where your heart is beating somehow even though you're dead it makes no sense you know but it's just like or in in the case of like that where it's like you could just take the you know your create the creator's heart or you know like where <gasps> they're vampires. That's a cool concept in and of itself, dude. Like like what you just said about the heart being outside of the body. Like just thinking like a Beauty and the Beast Rose situation yeah. where he keeps his heart in like this like fancy glass like ornate thing yeah, in this castle or whatever. For sure. I mean, and like the the first hunter that goes to stab like stabs him right through the heart and right it does the, nothing nothing oh that would be and he scary. just rips their head off oh my gosh like that moment of ju- i mean that's like the the punching a bear in your your nightmare you know just like mm-hmm. oh oh i thought i was gonna kill i did him. it like being so proud that you actually staked the vampire and then and he just just like say good night and then he's just like good night and just like oh, that would be amazing okay so let me see and then it just cuts to the heart beating in the glass case you know um all right let me see what would you rather be a frog brother or a member of the monster squad i'm gonna i mean i'd probably say frog brother because you have the opportunity to become vampires then again then again if if i okay okay you own a comic shop though with your that's folks. true that would be really cool except for i we know what happens to the frog brothers i'm only considering the first movie as canon the other movies i don't i don't care i'm not counting them um so like just within the first movie we know that the frog brothers are successful right so like if we're living in that world in which like hey i'm a frog brother i know i'm gonna make it through this and i'm good yeah i'd go frog brother because it's a it's a you know it's, it would be really cool to experience those those you know vampires and all that however in real life like if I, as a person, had to fight either the vampires from Lost Boys or the vampires from Monster Squad, I'm going Monster Squad all day. The, the monsters from Monster Squad, although they like they look really cool, super slow, just normal type, you know, people as far as like their mo- movements. Uh, the vampires from Lost Boys are terrifying. Like they're, they're flying around. Like, I mean, that scary. sequence where they kill those bikers and punk rockers or Dude, whatever in the, oh that, that fire, like gosh like like they definitely like if the frog brothers weren't if they didn't prep that house to handle them like they were they were dead they were sitting ducks for 100 percent. yeah i mean that was for the same reason you know batman would make the best sandwich is you know like the frog brothers are really good at prime time you know um but turns okay. out i always like to put lots of garlic on my sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> but but those are all the questions we have for this week if you're interested in asking us ra- various questions and you know hearing us ramble about vampires for 20 minutes uh, go check out our you know check us out on the various social medias and you know talk to us there uh or you can just ask in the comments and we'll get to your questions i promise uh but steven every week we talk about what we're going to do you know this following week with our time like what kind of progress we're hoping to make what are you going to do this week i'm going to keep pushing and get a whole page done for sure Heck yeah, dude. I freaking, I love it. And your, your pages have looked so beautiful. I can't freaking wait. Um, also, will you start sending me the pages that you think you have? Yeah, so I can start... the TIFFs, basically yeah. the TIFF files. Right? Yeah, start sending me those. I want to start flatting them and like, I might start lettering them as we're going because why not? You know, like if, if mm-hmm. we get ahead, like it would be really cool to. I've been pretty good with my spacing this time around yeah. too, with, with your, for your words. So. Dude, I, I, I've been noticed. I've noticed it's, re- it's exciting, dude, because I like. We, it's once we get to the lettering phase of the comics i always get like super excited because like it feels like it's really coming together and then i also get that last 
draft of dialogue where I'm like, ah, I get to add, like, I can fit something here and like another joke. And I'm just like, I love that stuff. It's so much fun. Um, so I'm excited for that. But th- so this week, like if, if you send me those, those things, I'll try to color a page. I'll see if I can get that done. I do have to make a music video for critically stupid. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, I, I'm on a D and D podcast. I play a bard, uh, and I sometimes do recap songs. I write and record songs and make music videos. So I have to do that this week. So that's like, that's going to take up some of my tomorrow, but otherwise I'm going to, uh, I, I don't know. I have to solidify this freaking Kickstarter. So I'm going to try my best to just, you know, okay, actually, before I, before I say that, I was thinking about July for the Kickstarter. What do you think? That should work. Because I was thinking like it's Independence Day, independent movie. We can like at least it, it, <laughs> it's gotta have it has to have something March fourth. March fourth to your Independence Day. Exactly. I need July. it. You know. Um. So I I, I do want to work on the Kickstarter and like start getting that going because I want to set it up so people can like get notified and then um what am I gonna do with the comic though? I have to work. I mean. I'm done writing issue four, you know, with the exception of like maybe punching up a little bit. Uh, what should I work on this? We week? should be. And we and actually, I was, yeah. I mean, I could start uh, writing issue five, honestly, because I could. That way. Well, that way you can have your story in place because you can still edit some of three and four now. Yeah. So like if you come up with a really cool idea in five that you want payoff from another issue, yeah. you could still add it in because yeah, I'm only like sure. five or six pages into three, you know? Yeah, dude, for sure. And like I. I'll, yeah, you know what? Um, that's what I'll do this week. This week, I'm going to outline. I'm going to do my basic page outline for for issue five. That's what like that's my solid like that's what I'm going to get done this week. You know, so I'm going to do my music video uh, outline uh, issue five of Deathless, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to come up with the rewards for uh, the movie this week on Kickstarter. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure out like the the pricing of various rewards and like come up with some fun stuff. So that's what we're going to do this week. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you all for watching us. Thank you for hanging out with us for this long. If you're here for the first time, uh, just please hit the subscribe button. You know, hit the like button below. It really does help us out. Comment something to let the algorithm know that you know you want us to continue to exist. Um, but otherwise, just know that we're appreciative and we love you and we're so thankful to have you around. Uh, we'd love to hear about your projects, and so feel free to you know talk to us on social media, talk to us in the comment section, let us know what you're working on because we're here just rambling on about you know our projects for so long. So it'd be really cool to hear about yours. Um, Stephen, what would you like to say to the people? Thank you so much for the ones that do t- tune in every week and just give us love. Thank you for like you know being my friends, like a lot of you. Um, I appreciate and love every one of you. I hope you all have wonderful weeks, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of We Have Issues. Absolutely, thank you so much. I'm Anthony. I am Stevie Wildcard. This has been We Have Issues. We'll see you next time. Boom! Did it. All right, we're in episode 188, Stephen. It's huge. It's a big. It's a big number. We've never missed a we, week. We just, man, I was I was checked out last week because it was the quick episode. We yep. missed ep- we, we 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 missed the episode of murder. Oh yeah, 187 was last week. Damn it, we missed murder sode. Murder sode. All right. Sorry everybody. Sorry everybody. We missed the murder sode. We'll murder someone this episode just to, just to make up for it. Oh man, we have to do like a musical or something for episode 200. I don't know what we're gonna do. We have to do something big, like something fun. I was thinking about writing a musical and like, like just like a quick, you know, like doing like a 10 minute thing or you're like, which would only be like three songs, you know, like it would be pretty mm. easy, you know, it's not too bad. But all right, let's go. It's 188. We got this. <clears throat>